I'm, I am Turk is uh, probably the stronger player here, but uh, we're going to see hopefully a good showing from Perez, and I'm looking forward to seeing if he can take a game uh, perhaps off uh, I am Turk. We will see how that unfolds, but uh, there will be betting. There is no prize for the betting. It will just be for pride and for honor and for glory and all these things. Uh, bear in mind, if you're hearing this on the ESOC stream, there is a two-minute delay. Uh, we didn't figure that out. But uh, for the escape stream, but uh, the uh, the betting might basically is just delayed on ESOC, so it could not, it might not work as intended there. But uh, by all means, everyone will be given 100 points as usual, and uh, you can bet on the outcome of the series, and uh, that will still show up on the ESOC yep. stream. But, that works, uh, by the way, by typing exclamation mark bet followed by the player name you would like to bet on and the number of points you would like to bet. Yeah, and um, there's currently two minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can get 100 points before every game starts by being active on the Escape AoE channel. So uh, you'll be rewarded with points for watching and you'll be able to bet those points and see where you stand at the end of the day. That is how that works. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the New World Championship 2019. This is the very first game that I'm casting from this tournament. It is a round of 64 game and uh, we are streaming to the ESOC channel and to the Escape channel for the benefit of anybody uh, watching the VOD. Spawning in the south of the map in the color blue, we do indeed have I Am Turk playing as uh, my strongest civilization, the French, opening with an early market here, and uh, I expect going to be uh, chopping for hunting dogs. Almost has that 50 wood there. Honestly, uh, Will, I I'm very disappointed he's not taken the Ottomans in game one. No. Uh, given, given his that he's, name, I am he's not living up to the hype here. Yeah, he's, he's gone against his name, perhaps. He is, he is certainly a Turk, though. That is the case. Okay, well, it looks like we've got uh, Perez there in the red, and he's uh, off to the left there, but he's up to the north as well, and he is playing as the Russians. Absolutely. Going to forego his market. In fact, going to leave the coin on the floor. Uh, Russia can sometimes struggle to sort of get a market down and get up to the colonial age on time, but uh, that's absolutely fine. Uh, that's what he's doing at the moment. Uh, 50 coin coming in uh, for him there, as well as 50 wood, so actually might consider uh, hunting dogs, but uh, you know could do it. He's got the right treasures there. I am Turk finding 65 coin, but aside from that, uh, neither player... Okay, over here. I am Turk going for 80 coin treasure. Uh, his opponent nowhere to be seen. This is not like the Soldier and Gaja game where Soldier was actively searching. They're both sort of treasure collecting, which is the more normal sort of standard style you see uh, most of the time. But uh, 80 coin, a pretty good treasure there, and I'm Turk going to pick that up. And obviously he started with the market as well. So do you think he's going to be putting that gold to use at the market or is he saving that for later at this stage? There's not a lot you can do with it at the moment. Uh, you see he's got 105 gold there. He's probably just going to keep it all saved up and uh, use it for his steel traps upgrade in the next stage. Uh, really the only thing you really want to be getting in the first stage is, is that hunting dogs tech. If I click the villager, there it is. But uh, yeah, it's a nice treasure and it's, it's, like, it's still worth a lot of villager seconds. So it's just a good pickup in general. This, on the other hand, is a very, very nice treasure mm. to in the area with his scout he's going to go into combat there sort of uh, make make Perez know and now he's going for the treasure he's going to get some free damage he has picked that up 90 wood is that that's very strong isn't it that is a strong treasure wood is a very slow gathering resource so wood is always a really valuable treasure wherever you can find it but uh, Turkey's not going to be able to contest that. He's on the other side here. But uh, he might be able to get his Explorer over in time to go into hand combat versus Perez there. And then he's basically going to stop him, do lots of damage here. The scout is sort of keeping the snare on. He so might even going very kill slow. The, the Explorer yeah, here. That, that's that a is, potential, right? That's definitely his goal. I think with 70 HP, oh, he's dead. he might be okay to I get home. I think he's dead. I w I would, I'm oh, a yeah, betting man. That is he's, going, he's a dead man. That is for sure going down very quickly, right? So so what is the value here for, for Turk to kill this Explorer? Obviously, Perez wanted to get the 90 wood. That's pretty significant. But now his explorer is down. Is it worth it? Uh, yeah, I still think it's worth it. And when, when he ages up, this will get 100 X HP for free every time you age. So all he has to do is bring a vill over there and sort of pick him up again, and that'll be fine. Uh, and the explorer... You know, Russia not having his scout is kind of awkward because uh, they want to be scouting and want to know what, what's going on. But uh, actually, it looks like Perez being the aggressor. You know, France here needs to be is more important for France to be scouting. They need to know about this forward base when you're when you you are the aggressor. Right, perhaps absolutely. It's, it's like you're just oh, subscription coming in. Cheers, Empire for Earth. Thank you very much. Uh, it's actually actually Alex the cat ah. gifting another subscriber but thank you very much alex and uh, welcome to empire for earth yeah. um now i noticed i am he goes immediately for the outpost there obviously his scout is in or his uh, explorer trading is post, in that yeah. sorry i mean trading post excuse me if i say outpost yeah. when i mean trading post i say that all the time you, you do but that's fine but he's dropping that down that's obviously just 
he's there, he's in the vicinity, he yeah. wants an, a, a trading post, he's going to put that down. But don't you think that 90 wood is really good for the Russians since they can build that blockhouse before they age up? He can come forward maybe that a little bit sooner and, and get that blockhouse yeah. down where he wants it. And he's done that exactly that, right? As long as you get it up before you're aged, which is absolutely what he's done, uh, as soon as you hit as soon as you hit the colonial, you can queue up some military and he's just waiting here now for sort of 280 food and then we'll see uh, some musketeers going to queue here. I'm on the units in queue tab there uh, and that's that is and it's also useful as a forward spawn point so uh, it looks like turk's coming forward with his scout in in the stealth mode he's going to see the blockhouse he knows it's here what are we expecting in terms of first shipments here as well uh, it looks like i am turk is about to get a shipment now but uh, what are we expecting to see from Perez? Are we thinking Cossacks maybe or, or something else? Yeah, I think co five Cossacks is just an exceptional shipment generally because uh, a Cossack's worth 75 coin and 75 food. And if you do you know, that times five, it's actually over the value of 700 there resources, is. which is not you know, <laughs> usually a reason. Usually your shipment is worth 700 resources, but this is slightly more. And that means it's a really, really powerful shipment for Russia yeah. and also five Musketeers coming out as well. So heading backwards doesn't look like he's going to rush straight into the base. I think with these Musks, he's going to come back he's going to deal with the trading post that's sort of his early uh, commitment there and the cossacks which are better at raiding are going to come in here and uh, do some damage you see the, the villages they have 40 percent range resist so i sort of like this play because the musks they're not going to get a lot of damage done against villages whereas these cossacks will does pick up the explorer always worth doing 45 xp for free there uh, but now uh, we see France has uh, started with a stable. You know, he got 400 wood on his age up and has used 200 for a house, uh, two houses rather, and a stable as well. And, and he's just shipped another 700 wood, by the way. Yeah. That's just landed down there. He's going to need that for housing, right? He's on uh, 40 pop, so uh, can get those houses down and possibly add in a, a barracks as well so he can sort of be quite flexible in the units he trains. But uh, there could be a bit of a cab fight up here. Uh, Perez doesn't want to be taking this, but he's going to. Uh, finds himself stuck in. But the, the, the Hussar are a much stronger unit, right? So these Cossacks, they're not really want to going to take that fight. But uh, Musketeers nearby, but this is a little bit awkward. We might see... He's uh, going the wrong way, perhaps, although maybe he's thinking the safety of his blockhouse. He doesn't actually seem to have any muskets in queue, so they're not going to pop out and surprise the uh, the blue player there and uh, the Hussar oh, wow. continuing on to yeah. the the muskets there. Do you think he'll clean this up? He yeah. will. There's more coming in. I think he'll clean this up. My Just, goodness. I mean, it's not like muskets are obviously very cost effective, but these are actually what we call ruskets, Russian musketeers, which are weaker than usual ones. And just Hussars don't really uh, find that too much of an issue. Probably won't take this fight just because he's taken some damage now from this. But yeah, really, really nice for Turk. He's going to be very pleased with the Cossack yeah. ship. Uh, he's killed those Cossacks in the first batch of musks. He really doesn't have to be worried about raids as much anymore. Uh, and and is actually going to continue on to these up the top here. Uh, that outpost, uh, trading post, sorry, nearly going down. He's got the muskets chasing across the map, but I think this is so good for Turk. He's taking fights. It's sort of like a divide and conquer strategy yeah. <laughs> for the blue player, and it's working out so well. Perez has units on the map, but he's not able to use them to their best effect. And I feel like this opening with Hussar is, is actually quite strong against the Russians. The Jass coming in with the subscription there. Uh, yeah, it's it, traditionally cavalry have always been really good against Russia. They sort of do find it hard to deal with cavs simply because their musks just aren't as good as sort of other musketeers and you sort of need a good you can see they're just sort of streaming in here and uh, getting picked off and uh, turk being very careful to pull away weak units and sort of make those muskets follow him when they're in melee and you can see he's just picking these up nice and quickly and uh, he's, he's actually really really far ahead at this point and do you think this is going to start to snowball here if he starts to catch some villagers at the back obviously perez is built his blockhouse is very far forward he's not actually going to be able to reinforce his own economy very very effectively yeah i think he was hoping to just keep being aggressive and the units would keep turk back and distracted and he wouldn't have to deal with this so much but these units have just killed off like a ton of units they've been really effective i really like turk's choice to add in a few extra hussars as well just to reinforce the numbers and now they're still on the board and they're here just uh, forcing these villagers idle and behind this uh, he's, he's macroing to age up he's got that uh, coin on the floor is he yeah he's got his age up just in queue now uh, Let's take a look at uh, text being researched, TBR, and uh, that will be going up with the Exiled Prince, which is the fasting age up politician. Thank you, Ted Air, one, two, three, for the subscription. Uh, we do appreciate it. So, so what does Russia do in this position right now? Obviously, Perez has done a good job. He's protected most of his villagers from the, any potential damage. But the issue here being, I am Turk will be in the fortress age in just a moment. Yeah. 
obviously that's going to come with a power spike. And Cassetti, what, what does Perez think? do? Does he need to try and raid? Does he need to try and equalize an economy here? It's I, it's very difficult, I think, at this point, because Russia, like they're often what they're doing is being aggressive early on. So Russia really wants to sort of keep the game in the colonial age for as long as they can. That's where they, they right. want these sort of long, drawn-out colonial fights. Russia really wants to do a lot of fighting. Well, in the clue's in the name, right? Yeah, Russia. That's what it is, exactly. <laughs> uh, it's going to try and you know come in now and do some damage whilst Turk has only just gotten up because uh, there's not going to be any units or shipments coming for at least 30 seconds, right? But Russia, he sort of didn't manage to do that. He didn't keep his opponent in uh, the colonial age. And as a result, you know, Turk's found himself up in the fortress age. And uh, that's now going to be really difficult for Russia because uh, really they're strong units. You know, they've got Cossacks, they've got their musketeers. And when they age up, they don't really get those same benefits that other civs do, like strel uh, pardon me, like skirmishes and dragoons, that kind of thing. Um, so really, they just want to keep playing age two. They want to keep it drawn out. Uh, I'm not sure what he does at this point. He might follow his opponent up to the next age, but uh, to d if he does that, he's going to lose the block houses. You know, potentially. Right. Uh, the other option would be to sort of stay colonial and keep massing up and have a big sort of uh, you know lots of units. But uh, either of those don't seem overly appealing now it's just sort of the early game just did not go well for Perez so just a quick question here uh interjection um is the ESOC stream stream partnered yes it is it is okay apparently it's lagging so for those watching on the ESOC stream apologies for the lag it's not actually lagging on our stream right now but for some reason the ESOC stream is um I think I'll look into this at the end of this game and see if we can fix that for you um okay uh, that's unusual. Yeah, uh, because we're streaming with the the same. Well, it's, it's, it's the same to both. Yeah, it's a partnered um, stream, so you should be able to reset yeah, right. the quality options. I we're we're the... using we're using a program called Restream, which we've paid for, and uh, it should work. But, yes, uh, I think I, I may have selected the wrong option in Restream. I'll look at this at the end of the game. But in comes I am Turk, and we'll see what he can find here. There's a lot of villagers on that uh, gold mi a coin mine at the the top of his base. Yeah, and they are going to get sandwiched. <laughs> going to force them all in, causing a bunch of idle time here. And uh, yeah, here comes uh, Perez on the way back with his colonial mass to try and deal with this. But uh, Dragoons being sort of ranged cavalry, they're just sort of going to run away. And actually just going to take this fight. There's so few Russian units here. The Kurashes, I'm sure you've seen how strong they are, just going to come in. Uh, and they're just so tanky, 500 HP. And behind, you know, whilst these are tanking, these goons can I do so much Strelitz damage. especially, right? Like, yeah. what are they going to do? That we is... see the Minutemen being called by Perez there, and those Strelitz are just melting. Meanwhile, the uh, the Kurashers don't seem to even be, be taking a, a tick of damage. But <laughs> <laughs> <it's insane. laughs> they're going to have. They want. The, yeah, they're going to leave now. The Minutemen, and there are enough Strelitz to sort of force them back. But uh, it looks like the Dragoons are a little bit preoccupied. They do find some villages, but uh, you see these Cossacks roaming around. He sort of wanted to send the Goons back to uh, handle that, which is what he's done there. He looks like he might catch these now. A couple of Musk, pardon me, popping out. But. Uh, and the goons here as well. He's going to get the snare on top of these uh, Cossacks. Uh, more Jendans coming in from behind. Uh, and that is just means these Cossacks can't escape. And they're going to get cleaned up by these goons. And That this, looks like GG to me. Yeah, that is really not looking um, good. That's this whole army right there. Just melting away under that French army. And, and I am Turk now with this very scary He's, army. And, and I don't know. What, what can Paris really do to combat that? He can bring the Minutemen forward. Uh, well, yeah, here, here <laughs> they are. I, I'm not sure what you do. It, it's like... I love how Turk's not even making skirmishes. He's just going for cavalry. Uh, and now behind this shipping falconets as well, which we all know is incredibly tough to deal with, uh, especially in the colonial age where you can't match it with your own falcs. Oh, he's just tearing just, through the low HP done, isn't now. It? it is done. Oh, wow. Uh, there's such a... I mean, uh, can we see, like, sort of... Wow, just look at the military military unit population right now. But can we see some kind of graph that shows us the uh, military swing, like, in terms of... Uh, we resources at, lost or, or units lost, yeah. We can see a graph at the end, but uh, for now we've got units lost. Yeah, you can see Turk over the course of the game, <laughs> have uh, they've lost similar amounts of cav in terms of resources, but 45 muskets? Like, <laughs> so many. Thrown away, and now he's losing the blockhouses as well. Um, and this is, I, I think, just where it starts to snowball. M more strelets coming out. Um, I, I think they're just more sort of fodder for the Kurochets. They, they eat strelets for breakfast, dinner, and lunch. Yeah, they're trying though. He is trying. Like the Strelitz, they are quite strong against the goons. Like when they got multiple, they're sort of trying to force them off, but they can't go anywhere near. You know this this mess. We just saw a thirteen Strelitz shipment as well, I believe. Um, so we we're gonna see a lot more Strelitz coming out. Obviously, that's that's fine, but it's a bit one dimensional here. But 
Yeah. Okay, you know, he went for Skirms and uh, Dragoons of his own, I think, right? Let's take a look at... Oh, he's try he is now getting up to the next stage. Sorry, yeah. Cossacks, okay. right there. He's going to go up with the Exile Prince, which is the fast age-up politician again. Um, yeah, Strelitz and, and Cossacks might be fine. Might be fine? I d it's just so tough at this point, right? Uh, Turk just got such a strong advantage early on now, and he's just sort of coming in for that final blow. Uh, he's really relaxed at the moment. There's just not a lot he needs to do to finish this game out. Just now get, coming in with that sort of falconet timing. He's got the mass he needs to protect it. And this is a perfect time to be pushing uh, when your opponent's aging. Yeah, and obviously uh, Perez here. I'm going to gather that wood up under the TC. Quickly get that before the uh, falconets come in and ruin his day. But he's, he just lost his blockhouse there as well on the north. Uh, so he's going to have to build so far back now. And he's on berries, which isn't ideal either. Just no, no. map control at all. That's Looks like Blockhouse trying to be snuck up over on this corner, which seems to be the only place the villagers are actually not uh, forced, being forced into the TC. And you can see Turk just going to stand on top of uh, the base here, just knock on uh, Red's door, so to speak. The skirmish is sort of poking around, looking for villagers behind the TC, and he's just going to clean up all the houses. But Red, he is up to the next stage. He still has a stable. He's actually got five cav archers in queue. And uh, cavalry archers, they do have bonuses against the falconet. So maybe he can sort of get them behind uh, the fal, sort of flank them perhaps. There are so many blue units, that's going to be difficult to do. And now uh, Perez is actually popped. There's, he can't be training any more units. Uh, we might, maybe he managed to queue up a shipment before he got population blocked. Doesn't look like he's getting ready to come in just yet though. No, he's just buying time. He's waiting for that moment. I think he knows that if he loses this next fight, it is well and truly over. Villagers coming out. Hot air um, balloons. This is, so, <laughs> this is so BM at this point. He knows he's won. Villagers coming out to bash down the cannons. Yeah, it was a nice attempt. Yeah, this is... Uh, that's, that's done. This is not a real <laughs> shipment. It's This is just being silly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> XD. Uh, there you have it. Uh, I am Turk. Probably going to win this fight here as the strelets at the back go down. And there's the GG called. Uh, I'm going to quickly pop into the office and attempt to fix the issue. The stream may go offline for a second, but it will come right back. Okay, so we're going to try and fix the ESOC stream, which is lagging. And, uh, yeah. All right, so you can see uh, Iron Turk. Sound no sound? Do we have sound now? Do we have sound now? Ladies and gentlemen... Yay, says Alex the cat. I'm going to take that as a yes. Yay, sound. sound. It's, back. it's back. Okay, let's get the update. Exactly. Sorry about what, that. What was going on with the uh, ESOC stream then? Is that all fixed? Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, so to explain this real briefly, um, we have a service called Restream, which allows us, we stream to Restream, mm. and that allows us to stream to two streams at once. And for some reason, it's lagging on the ESOC stream, but it's not lagging on ours. Um, oh, God, Alex the cat. But we have no idea why. So apologies for that if you're watching on the ESOC stream. Um, it is not buffering on ours, and we have no idea why it's buffering on ESOC because the settings are the same. Hmm. What do? Well, we stop the ESOC stream or we just carry on and hope it fixes itself. I, I don't really know what to do right now. Yeah, that's kind of awkward. Uh, I was really hoping we'd resolve these issues, but, uh, you know, what can you do? We'll get there one day. Um... Well, we didn't have time to test it because the ESOC stream was live right before we were live, so we didn't have time to actually run a test on it before starting today. All right, we okay. are getting into game number two. Looks like uh, Rendori. We're going in. Uh, Alex, Alex the Cat, the cat is Thank going wild much. today. <laughs> and uh, Albo, welcome back as well with the two months. Uh, Alex the Cat, I mean, I would, I'm not going to read out all the names, but uh, thank you for the support. Um, we could do the host on ESOC to, to hear. I don't know what the I don't situation know. is. Anyway, but we're going into game number two. We are, and this will be on Pampas Sierras. Spawning in the south of the map, in the color red, we do indeed have Perez. Let's see if he can do better this time with the Dutch. Uh, going to, he got the counter pick here, so I am Turk. Turk, let's introduce him in the north, selected India. And uh, that is... 
uh, his civilization that he has to pick first since he won the previous game. And in response, it looks like Perez going to go with Dutch. So now does get sort of the counter pick option, so to speak. Uh, he could have still played Russia again, but uh, perhaps not comfortable in this map uh, doing so. And, and I absolutely like this Dutch pick. You know, this map, there are no trading posts uh, and Dutch, a solid civilization to play uh, when that is the case. So is going to be bringing them out now and uh, using the Dutch here on this map. Uh, looks like if we take a look at the llamas, the envoy is uh, scouting the Pampian Mountains to the west here, has found a couple of llamas there, but uh, India with the two scouts is going to sort of get ahead, so to speak. Uh, Red Explorer does come out, finds 80 wood treasure, so he will get the first picks in the lowland, and look like in the lowlands, I should say, and has found uh, 80 wood. So it looks like that's going to pay off this time, has found a reasonably good treasure, uh, but T Turk is ahead on llamas. He's got five and his opponent uh, on three here. The envoy is sort of going to escort that uh, back home. Goodness me, Indris AoE coming in with the subscription. AoE 3, rather. Thank you very much for subscribing. Lots of uh, subscriptions today. Mind you, uh, Alex the Cat, uh, responsible for quite a few of those. So thank you <laughs> very much. Alex the Cat, responsible for 20 of those, 20. Oh, for, for yeah, the record. That, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Another one, Math W64. There's so much support today. Thank you very, very much. But, uh, Zach, the Llama is now home safely, and that envoy is going to head on out onto the map. It is. Llama, Llama, Red Pajama. Perez has it home. And uh, Perez here... What's he got to do to win against Turk in, in game two and equalize the scoreline? He's playing as the Dutch. What is the advantage here that the Dutch can take against the Indians? Good question. Well, Dutch have a solid boom. They can keep up with India, uh, and they're usually they're quite good at playing defensively. You can use those banks sort of with uh, to make sort of a make it hard to path right into your base. Skirmish is uh, pretty good against all of the units that uh, India has. And uh, just ultimately, it's probably a Civ he's quite comfortable with. I think most of the time in Age of Empires 3, uh, you can't really directly counter anyone, like hard counter in a sense. You, you can't really do that. So uh, it, it's probably just a Civ he's practiced with and he knows this matchup well or, or something like that. And we'll see sort of how it unfolds um, going uh, sort of later on, yeah. This treasure he's working on, this is quite a strong treasure. 225 wood. I think he's just waiting for his crack shot to recharge, and then he's going to grab this. Uh, oh, that's very nice. That's, that's a, big, a big, very big amount big of wood. Big, juicy one, yeah. Um, Perez getting all the wood here. And, and meanwhile, the Turk is contesting a treasure in front. What's this one? 80 coin. Okay. Lost Mosh gold. Mosh? Moche? Moche? Mo 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 I don't know. Something like but, that. But uh, this is a, a no t um, TP map. Yep. And how, how is that going to influence things? You know, w would that really influence the Civ picks here? Does that make a significant yeah, difference in, in your Civ choice? Most of the time, like the biggest influencing factor on what your civilization choice will be is like how many trading posts are there or actually are there any at all? Mm -hmm. And that's why it, we're seeing Dutch, I think, come out on this map. You know, civilizations like France, Germany, uh, they usually really do like to see trading posts. So none of that here. And uh, India, likewise, they, they can handle not having a trading post as well. Right. They don't necessarily need that. So that's why we're seeing these civilizations. But uh, both okay. players now up to uh, the colonial age have clicked up, so to speak. Although if you're India, you're not really clicking up. I suppose you're actually laying building down. Building up. Building up. Yeah, that's how that works. <laughs> I like it. And yeah. uh, he's been scouted by the envoy there. And even the explorer is coming over to take some pot shots yeah, at and that I like, villager. I really like this from Perez. He knows he's up against India. He knows there's a potential for Agrifort to be placed in the middle of the map. And uh, he's going to bring is both his scouts denying in. it? Uh, no, that will still build by oh, itself. Oh, I see. Okay. See, it's still going up. It just goes much more slowly right, when there's uh, okay. say 29%, 31%. Yeah. It's just it's just slow. He you does kind of want to build there. Here. I, I'm uh, still a noob. <laughs> but you know, this this is still like absolutely intentional from Perez there, right? He brings the villagers in, sorry, his scouts in just to because he knows there will be a villager there and uh, can can use the envoy and the explorer to sort of uh, deal some damage to the villager and sort of force it away and actually uh, force Turk to have a slower age up, which just gives him a lot more time to get right. set up and do what he sort of wants. But right. uh, and uh, he sent more wood as well. So you know, is the plan here get that early wood, get those banks down? That two two five treasure for the wood is is got to be a significant oh, yeah. boost to him here. That was a food treasure, but that's oh sorry, was that food? It's still really really yeah. helpful because uh, oh my goodness, Chuck Norris, congratulations, Alex the cat. <laughs> uh, you're gonna make those notifications nonstop. He's like the queen. He yeah. sees someone it's into just, the yeah, uh, you in have the chat. One. He's like. You I jump thee, <laughs> Sir Chuck Norris, 29. You, sir, are now a subscriber. 
<laughs> you may rise. <laughs> oh, is that another bank? Yeah, Dutch is going to want sort of three, four, or maybe even five of these. We'll see. Sort of, you can measure what sort of uh, kind of fast fortress they get. Okay, seven hundred wood coming out. So banks they cost three hundred and fifty food, which that food treasure is really helpful for, but also three hundred and fifty wood each. Uh, this one I he, see, yeah. he gathered for the resources during transition, and I'm sure that food treasure helped him out quite, quite well. Old gent will, yes, Albert. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, you turn it down subscriber i love doing that voice it's absolutely brilliant but uh, yeah the 400 wood it looks like with that 400 wood which was an age up politician bonus he's yes. using that to chuck down another bank and then uh, with this 700 wood uh, probably going to see some houses and maybe yeah a couple of houses oh no just going to chuck down the third bank there oh, uh, go for wow. a market as well that's a fine is this is this potentially a bit greedy though i mean all these banks are being built forward in, in sort of like a wall a concave wall yeah um he saw the agrifort in the middle of the map is he not expecting some kind of aggression here well, that's exactly why he's doing this, right? The bank has 4,000 hit points. It's not going down in a hurry. You're used to buildings in AOE3 taking a long time to die. Uh, the banks are not one of those These buildings. These are fortified banks. Yeah, you they... know that vault? That's where they keep the cash. Try getting into yeah, the vault. You're not getting into the Dutch <laughs> banks. And and what it does here is it sort of creates it, you know, he can put his, because Dutch is the only sieve that can make skirmishes in the colonial age. So the skirms, they can sort of hide between the crevices and cavalry coming forwards uh, will have a hard time sort of getting in there. Or it really any unit it's just like a nice you can see it gives you more line of sight as well because uh, you can see anything coming like these elephants for example oh uh, it's called sexy <laughs> so uh this is going to be a five bank boom coming out of uh perez was it the, no i'm just seeing wicked cossack say five it's, banks it's it looks like he's four in, banks he looks like he will be intending to make a fifth one though but uh, got oh, four goodness. here right we keep you see uh turk now coming in here looks like he's gotten his two sepoy for free that you age up with uh, coming for free from the Agrifort, and uh, behind us is trained some Gurkha as well, and uh, a four sour shipment on top of that that was arriving at the uh, forward Agrifort. So that's the here. aggression we probably expect from the Indians here. Perez at this point should be prepared for this, right? And do you, do you think he's prepared for this right now? He can obviously jump into his TC. Yeah, Minutemen uh, coming out. He just wants to keep the skirms away from the uh, sours here. But uh, yeah, as long as they don't really kill off too many units, he'll be sort of okay. These monks being a real issue, actually. They've, they've got a little bit of area stomp. damage on them. They're actually yeah. not too bad once they get up to the colonial. Oh, oh stop wow, coming look in. Wow, that. They're actually taking them out quite nicely there. Yeah. Good stuff. And and uh, what is Paris training right now? Has he got anything in queue at the moment? Perez, okay. uh, he was making, he's got a batch. Of, he's got nothing in queue just yet. This is the stuff being trained. Um, but he, I mean, he's got a lot of food and a lot of gold right here. Do you think he's, is he really being that greedy to just, is he going fortress? Uh, no, he, well, it looks like the eight pike shipment was forced. Dutch often doesn't really want to send this. It's like they'd rather send the economic stuff. Uh, this is a mark of he's feeling the pressure and uh, he wants a bit of extra units to sort of deal with the cavalry. As I mentioned, they get skirmishes, the, the Dutch, which he's training. Uh, and to protect them, he's going to need some kind of anti-cav. So those pikes are going to perform that function here. So I don't think Turk has seen the pike shipment, but he's going to be pleased that uh, it has come. It just gives, it gives him a lot more sort of leverage there. And uh, if he knew it was there, he, he he's sort of that would be, you know, so, uh, it looks like Turk's just going to be massing up, creating some Gurkha. Can I put the recalculated on? Yes, I can. All right. So, we can see that Perez slightly ahead in economy right now. Um, Turk has that military lead, but he's not able to, to really push it, it seems like. He's actually gone back, retreated toward his Agrifort, and we've got a building coming up next to that as well. Is that a... Oh, it's a consulate. Okay. So, what are we expecting to see from that consulate there? What's his uh, objective in building that? So you get export sort of just passively generates, right? And uh, you can ally with... Uh, there's a couple of things you can do. You could ally with the Ottoman at the consulate, and that can give you sort of an eco bonus because uh, they have sort of a four villager shipment that costs uh, export to send. So you can get four extra vills that way. It might be, well be something you sort of... That's the one you sort of start with because you want to get that eco bonus. But also they have something... Called, you know, they've got Minutemen that they can send there that cost export as well. So uh, I can have access to sort okay. of a shipment of Minutemen if needed. Uh, but there's also the British consulate, which is going to give him some really solid extra sort of... I think it's 10% hit points or something like that. Okay, so just to try and buff up that existing army or, or add some additional yeah. numbers. Looks like Paris tried to war, but he's left a gaping hole in it, and I am Turks and I walked straight in there. Yeah, but the Paris is now up to the fortress age here. Yeah, so I thought he he's, was. And this, this is he's just gotten up, and that's where he sort of wants to be as Dutch. So you can get you get these automatically upgrades to veteran skirmishes, gaping hole. <laughs> yes, that's right, Adnor. <laughs> 
Uh, looks like he's just trying to kite away from Sawas coming forward, so the Pike's coming in to sort of zone them off. But uh, every time, like, these Gurkha, they want to be taking down... Oh, the Stomp Whoa. coming in again! They want to be dealing with these Pikes. And once those Pikes sort of drift away and are gone, the Sawas will easily be able to come on here on top. It looks Doesn't... like the Skirm sort of walking in. That's uh, oh, not this ideal is, this there. This is good for Turk, right? I mean, he went back and picked off the oh! group at the back, and oh my goodness, all of the Skirmishers here getting caught by those Sawas. And I think he's going to lose everything. Yeah, that's not ideal. He needs another batch of, of skirms to pop uh, before he took this fight. But, uh, you know, Turk sort of is coming in at the right time. Dutch had just aged. He saw that. He thought, right, I'm going in there now before you get your first yeah. shipment out and your first batch of military units. Great timing from deal Turk. Deal some damage to you before, like, you can... I think Perez will still stabilize, but, uh, you know, he's, he's paying for it, right? This, this Fortress Age was not free. And it, losing... it absolutely looks like Perez um, maybe made a mistake there with, with the five... Uh, Skirmishers coming out the back of the barracks. They they came to the at the back, which uh, they were split off from the rest of the army, and that allowed the cavalry from Turk to get on top of them and take them out. Yeah, I, yeah, that is not ideal to be losing them. But you know, with the if we take a look at shipment sent, he's got his eight skirms. He's trained five more, and is now he's got what he needs to sort of push this away. So uh, he has stabilized. He's but he's he's paid for it, right? He lost a bunch of skirms in base, and if we take a look at units, uh, as units in queue, uh, units lost. He's lost eight villagers as well, which is really not ideal. So Turk's going to be quite pleased with with that outcome. Uh, he saw the fortress age and he punished it. Yeah, and he's going up now himself. I believe. So he, what's he going up with here? Let's take a look at text being researched there. Going to go up with the Tower of Victory. Okay, and what does that give him? Good question. I'm not sure until it's built. I think it's the one generates resources. Okay, so we'll see that uh, sort of more eco approach from Turk with that. Um, and at this point, obviously, the Dutch has, has the four banks sort of just giving him a lot of resources. It, does he have the advantage right now? Like, Is, is he in a, in a really commanding position with those banks? Uh, well, no, well, we can see the unit recalculate. It's 800 wood. Okay, I thought it was resources, right? No, they, that's the Chinese one, which is basically the same, right? But that's a trickle of resources. And the inspiration ability, ah, uh, yes, yes. So the inspiration ability, it, like, basically increases the stats of all the units very briefly for, like, sort of a, a very short period of time, like five or six seconds. Uh, and so when you're taking a fight, that is can be really, really strong. Hit 200 subs. Yeah, thanks to you, Alex. Um, <laughs> sorry, your, your question was, they, how are the banks doing? Yeah, yeah they, it's, they are, they're worth about four villages each, right? So they, and they okay. generate 2.75 coin per second, as you can see. But uh, I think Turkey, he did what he needed to do. He sort of got in there, he, he killed quite a few villages, and he as you can see that you know the banks are certainly strong but in the uh, india economy actually really really nice at the moment text complete there you got the ottoman villages in here that's so he's got four extra vills because of that lovely stuff so, and, well right now perez is going toward the agra fort which is taking some pot shots onto this army as well yeah uh, though it doesn't seem to do a huge amount of damage no, against those veteran skirmishers it's an age one agra fort it looks a lot more impressive it does very imposing doesn't it yeah it looks very it makes a loud bang and it's it's sort of very impressive but uh, it's, <laughs> it's more of a just a glorified blockhouse it's not overly strong um, so you're okay to take some damage from it, but it's still, you know, 25 area three, everything adds up, but it was just taking so it's a small skirmish with their units. In the so, so what is there. Turk going for now? He's got Zambarak there. Is that Zambarak? Uh, he's got Gurkha, which is skirmishes, yeah. and yeah, a few Zambaraks as well. Okay, and, and he, is he getting the upgrades here as well for those, those Gurkha? Will he upgrade those? Yeah, that's yeah he's going doing to that discipline now. Gurkha. So normally, you know, skirmishes, for example, they get veterancy for free. Uh, but the Gurkha, because India, they, they have to research it. So they pay for that. They do have to pay for it. But uh, I guess that's just part of I India, the civilization that they are. The Zambaraks will also need upgrading to become uh, disciplined as well, which is essentially veteran. Right. And, and I believe, what's the unit here? Has he got Reuters out here? Yes. So uh, the, the cavalry from Para uh, sorry, Turk, probably not going to be too effective here in this case. Yeah. But he wants the cavalry to deal with the skirms, of course. Do you think that uh, Perez has the better unit army composition right now? Well, they've both got very similar units. So I, you, I know you've not seen India very much, but the Zambarak's actually very much like the Dragoon. It's very much like the Reuter. They're all sort of the same style, sort of just okay. ranged. They're going for the sort of the same units, right? Uh, we're seeing skirmishes from Dutch, Gurkha from India, Zambarax from India and uh, the Reuters from the Dutch. So they're, they're basically both going Skirmgoon okay. at this point, which is you know, a fairly normal thing to do. It's a very safe thing to do. Skirmishes have that really excellent range. You want to sort of use that as much as you can. And then to, to defend the skirmishes, you're going to need a respectable goon mess so that they can't just come in with a few cav and sort of mess you up. So everywhere the skirms go, the goons will surely follow is basically the motto. Right. And Adonir in the chat saying Falks. Are we going to see Falks? I feel like that would be very strong here if they could get some nice shots onto the 
skirmishers. Uh, by the way, do those um, skirmishers from Perez have a higher range, or was that just because the uh, Gurkha weren't upgraded? The the red ones do have one extra range. So the Gurkha start with 18 range and get one extra range every time they're upgraded. Uh, so they start. They have one less range currently. Okay. So the red yeah, ones I, are slightly. I did slightly... notice Perez kiting him a little bit earlier on. He's yeah. retreating back behind the banks now as but, the siege starts in front. But the Gurkha do have like two extra attack, um, or yeah, and a few extra hit points as well. So uh, they they are sort of stronger, just slightly less range on them here. But uh, if we take a look at uh, let's go over to uh, the military units tab there. Forty Gurkha. So uh, definitely blue in the lead in terms of the skirm advantage, so to speak, which means it's going to be kind of tough for Perez to... Uh, he doesn't really want to be taking fights. Uh, the goons, as you can see, they're sort of staying back. They're very weak to skirmish a fire. They're really just there to defend against the cavalry. They don't want to get involved just yet. But uh, blue is sort of definitely making a lot of ground, sort of pushing in here, making it very difficult for Perez to uh, do what he needs to do in his base. You can see wood on the floor. He's not been able to gather that up. You mentioned falconets, uh, and that's not something either Civ actually can ship. So the Dutch don't have them and uh, India don't have them either. Right, and that artillery foundry at this this stage might be a bit too much of an investment for them. It looks like they're both committed to this fight now. They're going to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. I am Turk though, definitely coming out on top as the GG is called by Perez, and uh, wow, well, he just absolutely dominated that late game there. Um, once the the uh, fortress age came in. Yeah, and that is going to be the 2-0 uh, for Perez so far, bringing him to match point. Uh, bear in mind, this is the round of 64. This is still very early days, and uh, a lot of these matchups aren't going to be super close because of the seeding, and that's how sort of tournaments are seeded, right? But uh, Turk, a st really strong player. I think the question is, uh, can Perez uh, take a game off Turk? So far, no, but he's got uh, possibly uh, uh, another try. We shall see in the next game, which will be game number three. But uh, Turk doing uh, quite well so far. Let's take a look at the... Oh, pardon me, the village account here. And Turk just doing all the right things, just really punishing wow. that Dutch age up. Look at that. They were, they were close at the start, and then, I mean, yeah. Turk just pulled and way ahead. See a is little that a, bit of is that a result of idle TC time? Or, no, no. I mean, we, what's you, the... you, when he aged up here, we saw Turk come in, right? And uh, he just, because he saw his opponent age up, oh, he sort of come, he waltzes into his base and just like was killing those skirms that we saw that were in that first fight and was just shooting vills wherever he could. He like really, he saw the age up and he really punished it. That's exactly what India yeah. wanted to do. And at the do. same time, he got that eight villager shipment from the consulate, I believe. Yeah, four villagers. Well, four, for sure. sorry. Is it yeah, four? And, okay. and you can just see like when he's taking them out about the same time, it's <laughs> going up, right? And Ah, apparently India gets a villager with each shipment yeah, as well. That, that absolutely will help. That's true. With that I, villager should, I should have mentioned term. that. So if we look but shipment sent I, I guess that's why to. Perez went for the banks then <laughs> to try and uh, supplement his eco where yeah, he could. Dutch is always going to go for banks, but uh, they're definitely good, right? Yeah, um, and but... doesn't have to stop making villagers while aging. So I, 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 that's true. That's because they're because they build the uh, buildings, right? They don't. Yeah, the... exactly. Yeah. So that's very good economically. I think in that situation, then against the Indians, um, what do you want? Do you want to be more aggressive against the Indians to prevent them from? just sort of having the map control and building up that greater economy. Well, equally, they don't have... Uh, I mean, they do have distributivism and... Right, the wood trickle. And foreign logging, but right. that, uh, neither really quite as good as vill like actual villager shipments, right? Uh, and it takes a while for... I think this over the course of this game, you must have sent like six or seven shipments, which is, you know, basically... Right, right. It's not too bad. You, I mean, India usually... India can be quite aggressive as well, Um I wouldn't say you'd have to be super aggressive just to deal with the Indian Civ bonus. It's just something that they, they sort of have. Uh, um, Albo. 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 Albo going crazy. <laughs> it's like Albo and Alex the cat are in like an <laughs> epic battle to see who can give the <laughs> yeah. most subs or something. You're both crazy. Uh, thank you very much, Albo. Ten gift subs if you're in the channel and you've got a gift subscription. You know who to thank. Albo the man. Albo. Albatron. I'm going to call him. <laughs> Albatron. Al Albatron. That's that's his name um, now. I've as you decided. just saw, though, if we go back to the previous scene, you will see the current um, map pool, and the next map will be, I believe, it's Kamchatka, and uh, you'll see that in just a moment. Yeah, Kamchatka coming up next. Uh, if we can go back to the Civ Civ overview or the uh, the, the map overview. We can see the, the Civ picks so far. Uh, we can see that uh, Florida was supposed to be the next map, but it was vetoed. And can you remember who vetoed Florida here? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Well, yeah. it was vetoed by one of the players. So that means Kamchatka is our next map. Yeah. And it seems like um, 
well, Perez is 2-0 uh, down, so he'll need to get a win here. Yeah, but like a sim, so if we go back into the lobby here, it looks like uh, I am Turk, he's selected Japan, and uh, he lost the previous game. No, pardon me, Turk won the previous game, so he has to pick first. He's gone with Japan, and uh, in response, Perez going to take Russia. I really like this... Uh, I uh, say he's saying it. He, he he practiced the other the previous matchups. Yeah, I know. Mm. I know what you mean, right? And uh, he's probably not feeling too good. But this is well. A... I know his feeling. To be honest, it's like when when a player is just mechanically better than you, you just feel a bit powerless to be yeah. able to do much. And you know that you could play a hundred games and they'll probably win ninety nine on mechanics alone. Yeah, it's. It's hard. It is hard. You're right. But we're going into Kamchatka now. But if there were a time for Perez to uh, pick up a game here, it could well be uh, this this matchup here. I think Russia stand a very good chance against Japan. So we'll see how that sort of pans out. Uh, Russia, as you know, can be quite aggressive. Japan, they need to be sort of hit early before the shrines can sort of uh, get going and they can really sort of become really strong and really boomy. But uh, the bets are going to open very shortly so uh, get your bets in let's see if uh, Perez can uh, take a game off Turk and see if he can <laughs> see if he can not get 3-0 I think that's what he's aiming for here but uh, ladies and gentlemen spawning in the bottom of the map in the color blue we do have Turk playing as indeed Japan uh, scouts moving out into the middle of the map here uh, cheers Alex the cat coming in with 500 bitties <laughs> Stronghold is greater than AOE. Oh Continuing goodness. the discussion in the chat no, there, he, I saw... He, he had, he's having a war with Albo, because Albo put AOE 3 is greater than age 2. Yeah, Kappa. and now he's coming in with Stronghold. And now Albo's like, well, actually, Stronghold's <laughs> better than both of them, and here's 500 bits to prove it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, and then spawning up to the north of the map, uh, I don't know if you wanted to look at that next, but we have Perez in the red, and he is, of course, playing as the Russians. Absolutely. And both players are going to be in the middle of the map here. They're sort of looking for uh, the goats. You see on the map there are goats spawning, but in the center you get two goats that spawn. There's two spawns of two. So that's the best place to go. And there's, yeah, 75 food. There's usually, oh, and 85 wood. You, you often get these sort of bigger treasures spawning in the middle. So you want to scout them out and see right. what they are. So that's hotly contested at yeah, the start of the game. Sort of go, and you can see that reflected, right? Just they're mm. both just gone to the middle of the map. That's sort of where <laughs> they want to be. And as a result, they're just sort of having a bit of uh, contention. These monks, uh, uh, looks like they're coming home. Divine Strike coming in. Gonna they're pick strong up. as well, aren't they? They are against Treasure Guardians. They get that Divine Strike, which finishes off stuff occasionally. It's a bit like the stomps that are random. But uh, Perez just going to chase these units around and sort of harass them because, you know, they, they're intending to build shrines. And Oh, that's a wood treasure back there, isn't it? That is, yeah. 50 wood. Just going to keep okay. them off the treasures. And uh, Perez, he, he, doesn't, I don't, he doesn't necessarily have to build a trading post. It's not something Russia is always going to do, at least in the... Uh, so he's just going to chase around these explorers, and he's happy to do that. He's got the hand combat here. Uh, looks like he's going to just try and take the treasure anyway, and you can see the benefit of chasing him around now. Might be able to pick that up. Um, but in the middle there, looks like the goats uh, all been tasked to this shrine shrine here and this is going to be quite a strong shrine it's generating 5.8 per second there currently tasked to food to help him get up to the next stage who got it perez uh looks Ooh. like red stole the treasure i'm uh, gonna force that's what the... perez needs and, and that's uh, what he wants gonna Ninja force smoke. the poof and uh the i love it yeah <laughs> it's like uh dota 2 meepo all over again uh poof and, uh, and he's gone, is gone. But, um, yeah, we've seen picking up a goat there. And I guess if you're the uh, Russians here, trying to get those goats and prevent the Japanese player from grabbing them and putting them to his shrines is probably a good strat, right? Yeah, well, for sure. And also, you can eat them as well. But uh, denying Japan the shrines is... I mean, they're still going to get shrines simply because there's so many goats around on the, on the battlefield. But uh, they are sort of, you know, the goats, they make the shrines more effective. So you are right. Mm. For sure. So uh, we're going to see now uh, the... Uh, players just continuing to explore are we expecting the russian player to get very aggressive here then very in your face the japanese player of course playing quite far back at the moment yeah we'll see right he's just clicked up so he's just gotten the uh, age up in queue gonna be going up with uh, the quartermaster 400 wood there and as soon as the age up is in queue you can see two vills being pulled forward uh, and now every other villager except for 
a couple. We can see three still tasked to food there. Are going to be gathering wood, and uh, he's got the wood trickle in as well. And with that yep. wood, he's going to lay down a blockhouse uh, like we saw. This is a fort in the previous game, that is. And uh, this is a 14 villager age up. So often Russia sort of decides between 14 and 17. Uh, because they very train. early then in yeah. comparison to his standard uh, this is, or, or the options. But there's just two options, right? Because yeah. they train in three, you just have to decide. Do I want 14? Yeah. Do I want 17? <laughs> it's just an act. It's like this choice you have to make. But uh, Oh, hello. nice. Oh, Can hello. He was uh, trying to finish off the Japanese monk. Uh, but he used the poof to get on out of there. But uh, whilst he's waiting for the wood for the blockhouse, he's just going to be uh, in clan combat. Now going to lay that down, I expect. Just going to hurt them back. Yeah, and, and then... if there's one thing I know well, it is the Russians, actually. And, hey, uh, you've played quite a lot of them. Yeah, I've kind of gone off them more recently, but I, I know how to spam strelets, I can tell you that much. Yeah, no blockhouse just yet. I guess... Uh, Perez has spent some of that wood on this trading post. He does For get sure. the first pass quite quickly, so he's going to have uh, a batch of extra XP. But this does seem like, a, you know, as Russia, you often want to get that blockhouse down really, really early on. So now that he's just gotten the wood, yes, that's uh, it's going to come out. But sort of a little bit uh, later than usual, perhaps, which might delay some age ups. But uh, Turk, okay, he's going to go with the Turi gates here. Uh, often you see them, uh, the Japanese, that is, aging up with the Toshogu shrine, which just gives your shrines all of a big buff and makes them cheaper and that kind of thing. But uh, actually, uh, what this will do is, uh, going forward, all units, you know when you get XP for killing stuff or making stuff, the little XP numbers fly off the top of them. Uh, this means it'll be times by 1.5. Very good. So so that's kind of like, a, I'm not going to go for the, the, trade, the trade posts, but I will get some XP somehow, and I will do that through this buff. Yeah, so basically just everything like passively generates XP a bit better. Uh, and you get also a free samurai to boot as well. Okay, well... Is the samurai particularly strong against anything that the Russians, any strelet or... Uh, he's very good against cavalry. Does 20 he's a bit like a doppelsodner. Okay. So 25 times 1.8 versus cav there, and he's got a bit of area damage. But, you know, if he gets into hand combat, a bit like do doppelsodners against anything, he's going to do good damage. But he is a bit slow, and as a result of that, a bit clunky. But uh, he is uh, still helpful, right? And he costs 200 resources, so it's like getting 200 resources for free when you age up. But uh, Russia, uh, first batch of units has now hit the board. We see five musketeers come coming out of the blockhouse, going to meet up with the explorer and uh, start taking down this shrine here. And uh, you might be able to get these goats uh, when the shrine uh, is destroyed. So that'll be a nice pickup if he can uh, kill this off. But uh, it looks like Turk going to respond with Ashigaru musks of his own that he's trained and that samurai sort of tailing behind there. Yeah, he's going to come out and uh, we'll see. There's Ashigaru uh, just sort of... Are they stronger than muskets are they uh, i mean obviously these are ruskets uh, are they going to perform well in this engagement is that what we're expecting here no well these cost sort of 120 resources and they're quite strong you know expensive musketeers these are ruskets they're cheap sort of weak and you can see 170 hp right. 120 oh, i've just noticed he's gone for a, a second blockhouse so we're, we're expecting a lot more muskets than i imagine here Let's take a look at units in queue. It's going to give him certainly a bit more map control. I'm not sure if he really has enough economy to use both of them at the same time. But he has got, you know, extra firepower that does 30 damage, right, from both of them. Uh, this isn't ideal, but it has Ouch. sort of... Ouch! You, it's, it's hard to escape from the Ashy Musks because they do have slightly more speed than regular Musks, so they can catch right, up with you. Right, they're just sort of, yeah, they're kiting you and... They just sort of force you to fight here. Oh, man, again, though, it, it's the same story for Turk. It's that divide and conquer. Perez is having a hard time getting his units together and fighting as one unit. And Turk is just uh, taking advantage of that and abusing that fact every time, catching out those five muskets. And as a result, I mean, he's just going to be way ahead in military now. Yeah, you can see that sort of coming out. But Russia, he's gotten 10 musks on the... Is that a third blockhouse? Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. He really wants to lock down this location. <laughs> it's going to be quite tough to push in here, but it seems like, like a it. lot of resources to make on block. He certainly can't use all of them. I don't even think he can use two of them. I think one is the most he can really pump units out from. Probably but idling them. He's mm. never going to have, like, idle resources, so to speak. As soon as he has the resources to make something, he can, so, he can do that. So a question at this point is a third blockhouse or a batch of strellas? Um, that's yeah. You, I I wonder why he went for the blockhouse. Well, he sent thirteen strelets just now, probably at home because the raid's about to come in. Um, head try and head the, these muskets off from the the Japanese player. Uh, what do you think though? I mean, I, I feel like that wood might have been better spent on another batch of strelets actually. I don't know what he had in mind. It feels like units, especially when you've got two blockhouses, would be better. 
Uh, I can't really say why he's make the blockhouse, except perhaps he's trying to lock this down. But a bit of a fight in base now. Strelitz, they are quite good against Ashies. They've got, you know, Absolutely. multipliers, as you're familiar with. Minutemen being called as well and has that town center fire. And now Turk going to have to back off here. Uh, having to path around this market, which is a little bit awkward. And now Russia, uh, combined with all his shipments at home Very and the Minutemen nice. there, he's got the upper hand now. And it looks like Turk will have to back off. And at this point, I think Perez needs to push that advantage. I think he needs to go now and uh, do the damage at this point in the game he needs to push needs to try and hurt turk here because i think economically turk is a slightly ahead but it's Russia who needs to be playing aggressively in this matchup, and this is now Perez's time to strike. Yeah. Uh, bear in mind, like, Japan normally have a really solid boom, and certainly he is still ahead. The, the Japanese player is ahead on eco economy, but he hasn't gone for tons of shrines like you would usually see out of uh, Japan. They, they try to get mm. to 200 shrine pot very quickly uh, by sending wood shipments and stuff like that, but uh, another subscription coming in. Riot Coat gifting to A's 11 the Azamk <laughs> himself. Congratulations, A's. You can now spam AOE with in the chat i expect to see that on your streams if not i'll have offended but uh, that is yes aoe will right there um normally japan will have a, a much stronger economy than this so russia and russia scale really well their, their tc bonus is that the vills sort of train faster and are cheaper and, and basically train in, in batches so russia like can sort of catch up over time uh, and the longer this goes the better it will be for him but russia yes he has got that military advantage well not quite perhaps look it's sort of evened up now the issue is he doesn't want to fight in his opponent's base simply because uh when you're fighting in your opponent's base you can see minutemen pops you can see a batch of unit pop and you can see a shipment pop and that can sometimes happen all at the same time and there's also uh for japan the added thing that you can train units and uh, and send batches from your consulate if mm -hmm. you have the export as well so like fighting and pushing into the base unless you're absolutely sure you're going to be doing well is not always sort of ideal i think really he can be doing work in other places and he's sort of trying you know he's got a lot of map control which means he can gather resources nice and safe is that another subscription coming it in? was 10 alex the cat man w welcome uh, cross sniper <laughs> You are going wild today, Alex. This is, this is a lot of... gift subs now. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Other than thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, we hope you're enjoying the content. We hope you're enjoying the stream. Which I, I assume you are, but... <laughs> yeah, well, I should hope so if, uh, if you're... No, this sucks, all... but I'm going to support you anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah take all these subs. <laughs> You guys enjoy the stream because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Fight coming in. Perez coming down from the north there. What have we got to back this up? That's then that they're uh, Yumi archers, right? Uh, Shinobi, oh, no, no more. Okay, my bad. Um, they do look like Yumi. These they, are Yumi. Well, yeah, there, there are, are Yumi, Yumi in there. Yeah, yeah. okay. I thought there were. And they've also got the uh, Yumi attack archer Hello. upgrade in there as well, which is not ideal to fight. Yumi really strong against infantry oh, here. But Perez just shipped, uh, shipped Boyars. That's going to be a buff oh. to every single unit he has on the map right now, it's right? A, it's or is a, it just the Strelitz? It's Strelitz and Cossacks. The Mosques, oh, well, uh, he hardly has any Strelitz. It's still a, it's still by far one of the strongest shipments in the colonial age for any civilization. Right. Uh, actually, like, no, he does have about... Well, maybe 40% of that army there is, is Strelitz, so that's still very strong. Yeah, and going forward, he can sort of st train Strelitz and Cossacks. You know, obviously, I it, you, you prefer to have it when you've got a big mass of Strelitz, of, of course, but it's still a very solid shipment sort of whenever you send it for Russia. Total poggers, yes. Yes, needs an Aggie now, perhaps. Terrible boys. Yeah, it wasn't ideal, Kaiser, was it? I mean, maybe five Cossacks would have been a stronger shipment uh, just because of the immediate bonus it gets. But still, boy, are still solid. Uh, this isn't ideal, though. There's a lot of stuff here. You can see Japan ahead on military population, which is actually quite impressive, given that uh, yeah, Japan's right. units are considerably more expensive than uh, the Russian and units. And he didn't here. even go for the eco approach, did he? He with with the, uh, the shrines, like you say. Yeah, and he's so. also got the Daimyo Multitada in the back there, which is a shipment. Uh, this is granting a you know an aura bonus to all of these units. You can see the aura is only affecting yes. these guys. He's too far away now, but uh, that that Damia really low health. He needs to keep him sort of safe. Five HP Oof. there. That I mean, that would have been a big pick for Perez if he managed to catch that. But keeping him at the back, just giving that buff, and uh, as he retreats here, those units getting that buff as well. Perez trying to come forward with the Cossacks, but gets picked off almost immediately. Yeah, he's, he's a bigger mass of Cossack there, doesn't he? He's walking in and thinking, "Oh God, I can't take that." Yeah, he, he definitely needs more Cossack. Thing is, though, he doesn't want to leave this location in a hurry because. He's got two. Ah, oh, five Cossacks now coming out. Oh, that was good. Right on top of them as well. But now the Musks them. are... Is only, yeah, this, they're going to drop down really, really fast. And now, like, that sort of... Now it's going to be... Ugh, it's hard. Yeah, of course, those Strelitz getting picked off at the front there. They're not that valuable. 
And uh, I guess the Russian army, it always looks more scary and, and, and bigger than it really is. Yeah. Oh, dear. He, it's just he can't... He needs, a, a, like, a proper Cossack switch. He's got, yeah, stable down now, and he is starting to train Cossacks. Yeah, we've got Strelitz being trained as well, trying to pop those out on the front. More Cossacks coming in from the back, and uh, we're going to see if that will make a difference okay, as nice the Cossacks pop. come through, uh, through here. Ten Strelitz, uh, five Cossacks coming in. If he can get these Cossacks to snare the Yumi, that will be strong, because then the muskets can fire can on them. catch them. <laughs> but yeah, he doesn't seem to catch them. Uh, the very good. I think this is very, very good unit control by, by I Am Turk here, really. He, he's got a really good grasp on that. He, he's backing up with those units. He's using the abusing the fact that they are faster moving, getting out of range, making the muskets chase, and uh, picking off units as he does so as well. Yeah, now coming back in. See what he can do. He still knows he's got a sort of an advantage, but I think he expects to see Cossacks now because he saw that five Cossack shipment. He knows that's done. And then he saw more Cossacks. So he sort of knows, ah, right, you've been training them. And uh, that could be combined with like a four Cossack shipment. So he was playing a little bit sort of like, let's get out of here, but now sort of coming back in again. Right, right. Probably. There are more Cossacks though this time. And uh, I think, like you say, in if he can get enough Cossacks together here, then he could actually overrun this. But I think Perez needs one good fight. We saw another four Cossacks being shipped right there to that forward blockhouse. And, um, of course, they're affected. Are they affected by Boyars? They are, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they are, yeah. So that's important. But at this point, I mean, it, when, when does this turn? Where, where does I Am Turk go from here? Where, when does he sort of say, right, that's enough poking and prodding. I'm going to age or, you know, I'm, I'm just going to keep massing forever. What, what does he do here? I think, I think he's just happy to keep massing forever. Like Russia just wants to sort of, you know, can have all the natural resources and just gather them up safely and stay in the colonial age. Oh, well, here we which go. Which is sort of where he's strong. Yeah, coming in with a big mass of Cossacks now. That's exactly what he needs. He just needs to get them on top of the Yumi Archer and then he can sort of deal with them more easily. Let's take a look at the anti-cav of Turk. This could this is starting to look a little bit dangerous. He's not got that many anti-cavalry, but uh, he knows like just the thing is though r the Japanese units are just so much stronger. So even though the pop is very equal in terms of if you look mm. at the military unit population, Japan has just got more stuff because <laughs> these units cost more. A virus threat! Oh my goodness. Uh, no, that's the defender summary. I think we're we're yeah, safe I, for now. I see. They, but uh, maybe <laughs> these strelets, however, don't look safe for now. <laughs> no, they don't. Not at all. And I mean, those musks being in the back there, just like God, oh, we're just so slow. Okay, we here we go. Get... He's, he's bringing the Cossacks forward. He's going to try and get them on top of the Yumi there. Uh, the Nagi's sort of distracting them a little bit. You can see Ashigaru Musketeers coming into hand combat. They want to deal damage against the uh, cavalry there, but they are being picked off quickly by these ranged infantry in the back. They are now all gone, but the Cossacks, they haven't found themselves on top of the Yumi, which is where they need to be. Instead, they're fighting uh, these uh, Naginata, which isn't ideal, but the Musk Shoot, God Musk's damn really it. strong against the Nagi. There they're trying go. to get into combat versus them. The Strelitz now trying to come up close to the Yumi, since Strelitz do... Uh, I guess the Yumis do a lot less damage against the Strelitz than they do to the Muskets, so trying to make it so that the, the closest target will be a Strelit. But you can see just the uh, the Zuta Zuta more units principle coming in uh, really, really strong here. And uh, Japan just have such strong units. And although Turk had like the, the was making the correct composition, uh, you switched to Cav in the end there, they were just bleeding out a lot of units earlier on. Uh, sort of Perez just sort of you know dri drip feeding them in there, just losing them, trying to defend these blockhouses. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a result, just sort of never was able to mass up to the respectable numbers he would need to deal with Japan and Japan having the strong units uh, uh, does come out on top it, uh, in that fight. It feels as though Turk won that through a series of small victories that <laughs> added up to, to become a, a very successful fight in the end there. Uh, he did a really good job and Wow, um, rip my denari. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll get more though, don't worry. <laughs> you'll get 100 more before the next game starts. Yeah. But uh, with that, it will be a 3-0 victory to I Am Turk, and he will go through to the round of 32. Yep, and Perez will drop down to the loser's bracket, so to speak. This is a 64-player double elimination qualification event for the New World Championship and uh, the top eight will con will continue this double elimination tournament until eight players are, all but eight are eliminated. So uh, when only eight remain, those eight will be invited to Manchester uh, to compete on the main stage here in the yeah, studio. with us, but, uh, live. We might see I Am Turk there. He does progress forwards, mm -hmm. but uh, here are the go. standings. You can see a nice clean sweep from I Am Turk. Didn't even get to that second veto. Uh, I'm not sure who vetoed what, but... Uh, 
Turk, uh, a decisive victory with France, India, and then in this final game on Kinshepka as well.